Rebuilding the X220. Better. Faster. Stronger. Okay, not, not really stronger. Just better and faster. Top of the morning to ya! Nah. No, really, this is the Racer Star 35 Amp ESC 4-in-1, the anniversary edition that was on sale in Banggood for about 28 bucks. And during their anniversary sale was for $22, so I couldn't really resist since I needed an ESC anyway. It comes like it is, a fairly substantial block of copper with some good components, two cables so you can hook up your battery, and an XT60 cable. Or an XT60 connector. Sorry for the camera shaking, I was doing this handheld in a hurry, but anyway it does have the little XT60 and two cables that it comes with. And uh, yeah, it also comes with its uh, nice little instruction sheets that show the motor layout. And one important thing about this, if you notice, the motors don't line up to the way they are in beta flight. So you simply have to wire in 1, 2, 3, and 4 as 1, 3, 2, and 4. Just going to get a weight on this. Um, like I said, it's fairly substantial. Just a piece of copper weighs in at let's say four or thirteen point six with the motor connectors. So yeah, twelve point zero of copper. And as you can see, I've already stripped down my the body of the X two twenty since my motor blew up. Actually, the ESC blew up. And the motor got a little crunchy. That's alright. So yeah, I, that's a wizard frame that was just stripped down. I also cracked one of the arms slightly. I barely called it a crack, but I got a new one. Um, just because I was already waiting for the ESC. So I thought I'd just have a spare. And since my motor was crunchy, I picked up these 2306 Racer Stars. 2700 kV. Uh, I got both clockwise and counterclockwise, but I uh, was pretty impressed with what I got. So uh, I hope it'll work. And uh, this is my original Wizard flight controller, and I have to use the PDB from the Wizard because the Anniversary Edition Racer Star 35 Amp does not have a BEC battery elimination circuit so it puts out full VBAT and not uh, you know not the right voltage so uh, I really don't want to fry my board but it just feeds right into the PDB this part's kinda of funny in that if you use this 35 amp BSC with these motors on the wizard frame a funny thing happens and it's hilarious the wires that come on this are one to three millimeters short so there's no way you can just wire it in and then connect the motors and it's kind of annoying because it makes the build not quite as neat as it should be um, you can trim and cut and you know add the wires where you want to I'm go actually going to just extend the tabs out using some extra wire I had and uh, it, it kind of looks like a 12-legged spider when I'm done. But that's just, a book, uh, that's just a simple caveat about this combination with the wizard frame. So yeah, as it is, I'm just going to wire in the battery actually to the ESC, to the PDB, to the flight controller. I'm changing out the IA6B with an X6B that's dual antenna and the reason for that is that this X6B is so much smaller and I don't have enough room in the body to use the original controller or I'm sorry the original receiver I lost the weight footage so sorry about that but one thing about this X6B is if you want to use IBUS or SBUS you use the this connector or the one down below the either one of these will work the outside connector is actually for PPM so for comparison purposes 
I have the original wizard motor and it weighs in at 26.4 that's a 2205-2300 kV the racer star motor with a little bit longer wires weighs in at 32.4 grams um, or yeah I'm sorry 31.8 grams uh, they do feel very good so yeah they feel really good um, I know they have a wide air gap that some people complain about but they feel good and after flying them I'm, I'm actually impressed especially for the under $30 price these little rubber o-rings these are what I use to soft mount my flight controller and it just kind of use them as isolation rings um, they were very inexpensive and I have another video on how to do that with the nylon standoffs one other thing with this racer star ESC the uh, posts where the standoffs run through those are connected to the battery terminals so make sure you use nylon non-conductive standoffs that is an absolute must unless you want to fry your ESC so my first thing, I'm going to wire in my positive and negatives here. Um, I should have looked at which one's which. But anyway, I'm going to wire in my positive and negative. And I normally use sticky tack, but in this case, I'm at using a standoff so that the heat um, won't damage anything. This is a purely uh, very thick copper piece, and it's going to conduct a lot of heat. Um, these are all uh, these are all connected and it's solid solid piece of copper so if I use my sticky tack it's going to make a big mess and I don't have any arms so I'm going to suspend it in the air and do it this way and uh, we'll see how that works that actually works surprisingly well um, just pretend and dropped it right in and uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of happy with that. Now I'm going to have to figure a way to extend all of 12 of these pads. And I have some spare ESC wires, so I think I'm just going to wire up like an extra 3 to 5 millimeters off of each of these tabs and go that route. We'll see how it goes. So I finally got my, J8, my XT60 in. And uh, if you notice, positives on the left by motor two. You can see that motor two positive on the left, negative on the right, motor one's on the right. Yeah, for some reason it's one, two, three, four. Ah, oh, fudge. And um, in doing so, I remembered a trick. Uh, every time I go to solder in an XT60, I end up moving these just enough so they're hard to plug in so it's it's like it gets hot enough to melt the plastic a little bit whenever I'm trying to get all the solder in these so I plugged in a spare cable to keep it aligned so even if it melted a little bit or shifted it would stay in uh, stay in alignment and it, it seems to work so uh, we're moving on I'm adding extensions to each of these so I'm just starting with that and I'll show you that when it's done just a few minutes and one two three so I work in a place uh, with some projects going on and every now and then we have someone who looks a little too closely at what's going on and they don't see uh, well they think they know what they see and while it's ugly, this is what we call making the sausage, which is a little more graphic than you want. These aren't exactly pretty, but I will clean them up. And this is about the lengths I need. So it literally is between 2 and 5 cent millimeters of extra wire from each tab. Um, believe it or not, they're very secure. I can pick the whole thing up. Very secure, but not uh, not great. Um, anyway, I'll shine these up. It won't take that long, and uh, move on to adding the motors.
All right, now I'm making sausages over. This is a little bit prettier. Um, these will clean up. I'll trim the edges off when I attach them to the motors. Get the right lengths, and that's about it. So get that going out. Get that. All right. So the racer stars come with uh, short, short. I have the flash on for a reason, but they come with short and long screws. And the long screws with four millimeter arms doesn't seem like that big of a deal. It only goes a millimeter into the metal. The holdout though, and if you'll notice on this one, is that one of the wires is directly behind the screw hole. So if you tighten it down, you'll end up tearing into your wire. And uh, yeah, so if you're not careful, um, you'll end up damaging the motor. I had one like that and that's what made it, made me look and see, because I thought there was only a little clearance, the, um, the longer one barely clears the top of the metal into the gap and that's not really a problem unless you have something like that where you'll gouge into the wire. So just saying that to be careful, just something to notice as I was buying my motors. All right. And here we have it on rubbery standoffs, my nice spider webs, everything matched up. I have not soft mounted these yet, but we will. We are motors. And if you notice, I spin mine backwards. And there we are. That was a little more difficult than needed, but it works. So once again, I've put it on a tower so I don't melt anything, but I have desoldered the original, uh, where is it? The original XT60 cable. Got a mess over here. Desoldered the original and I added some smaller silicone wires. The reason for this is kind of funny. The reason for it is, if you notice on the ESC, on the ESC, the 4 and one ESC, positives on the left. Well, on the PDB, the positives on the right. So I have to cross over wires and my thicker wires didn't work. And then I realized my PDB is not going to be doing very much. So I used smaller wires. And here's my crossover. I had to desolder all the ESCs for the original PDB, so that's why it's all messy. And yeah, but there it is. Had to redo my VTX and my camera. And that's where we are right now. And the last thing I have to do is wire up one two three four and it's coming out of here it's just to plug in on the stack on the bottom and you see on the bottom has a plug and according to the chart it's one three two four not one two three four notice the motors are not in beta flight order, so they call it one, three, two, four, which means I have to wire in one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four, and that will make beta flight go one, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Here's hoping. So I've tinned up my areas, and one thing that I have learned from this whole experience is that if you start off not having good soldering skills, by the time you finish, you're at least acceptable. How sad is that? Get my video. And there we are. And if you notice, three and four cross over. 
I hope. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to cover that with hot glue and buckle her up. And added some hot glue for protection. So now I'm going to be wiring in this AX6B and it comes with uh, two of these types of cables with the three wires and so I'm salvaging one to make one full length cable that has the same type of terminals. All of the others come with servos and I'm not 100% sure why but you basically just resolder and make it so it can plug in uh, into the flight controller. So here's my new connector. Got it all wired up. I don't know why they didn't send one like this. Because I don't think anyone uses pins or servos as much uh, anymore. And this is a fairly new one, so. But got it in and I'm going to bind it and see if it works. Right. So now I have this plugged in over here. Using this cable, it just plugs into the right or into the left side. It has to be the left side next to the buzzer over by the outputs. So left side. And it just fits right in, snaps in place, very snug in there. To bind this to a fly sky, you hold the bind button down, turn on, you get binding. So, sorry for that. Get binding. Then you hold down the bind button, it's the outside button, while applying power. And literally by the time you do that, this just pops right up and you're bound. And moment of truth. So, engaged. I have a beeper mode somewhere, but we have success. I set a beeper up so I could find it. And I have different rate profiles. So my beeper is working. And that's my failsafe. Along with Failsafe. So, failsafe works, just everything works the exact same as the other. And back on. Engaged. And on. Off. And failsafe. And for the record, I do have a smoke stopper, so I pre-checked, but I also did the continuity check, which told me I was pretty safe. And now, the moment of truth. So I'm using Racer Star 5048s and they're um, the plastic version that actually shattered on me before but I seem to love them on this on this one because they're just light and very responsive. Um, of the uh, mods I've done the D-Shot 600 seems to feel the best and the um, the new motors are just smooth and I love it. This is uh, completely untuned. I didn't even touch beta flight. Uh, I didn't even update the ESCs. I did set from one shot 125, which was the stock Sheen Wizard. I set that to D shot 600 and uh, was very happy. I didn't have to recalibrate or anything. And this flight, I'm just kind of testing out the waters and seeing how it's going. 
And I remember thinking, like, it's just so much faster, so I'm barely on the throttle for most of these. And I'm just amazed by, like, how smooth it was, just just exactly like it was. I mean, I've done no tuning. Um, but of the mods I did, other than D-Shot, the motors, uh, I have the new uh, X6B receiver, still using FlySky. And I'd put on two Pagodas, so this is uh, off the Kylan JJ Pro, the hood style, uh, not really hood goggles, whatever you want to call them, the box goggles. I put a Pagoda antenna on there, and I put a Pagoda antenna on the stock Wizard, um, the VTX, that has the 90 degree angle on it, the stock Wizard one. and the picture on it is just 10,000 times better than the linear antenna and I was able to test it a little bit later it has probably a good 300 feet more range before it even starts breaking up now you'll notice on here there is some motor noise that comes through um, that's throttle dependent so I found out if I'm at a quarter throttle it'll be worse and at full throttle it's actually not as bad and zero throttle it's not that bad um it's still monumentally better than my linear antenna uh, especially reception around trees and obstacles and whatnot but overall i love this mod uh, or i love the new uh, the new 4-in-1 esc I love the new motors, I can't speak highly enough of them, considering the ESC and the motors was $60 total, total, for all four motors and all the 4-in-1 ESC. I cannot complain at all. Uh, this is, to me, this is how the wizard should have felt out of the box, and I'm pretty sure it's close to how the wizard feels with the, uh, the, or I'm sorry, the Wizard X220S fills the new version with the F4. Um, considering this is still on the F3 flight board, oh yeah, I forgot how fast it was. Um, I'm not a fast pilot, like, I'm, I'm not that good, and especially a month and a half not being in the air and only using simulators, this feels so good to me. Anyway, that's about, oh, 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 last thing, last thing. With the 2306s, I'm still using the same batteries that I was using, but the awesome part of it, I was getting almost five minutes per flight, and that's flying at speeds that were faster than stock, and um, you know a lot on throttle, off throttle. But my least, the least amount of time I got on my battery was about three and a half minutes, and I was blown away considering that the uh, I'm going from a 2205 motor to a 2306 and from 2300 kV to 2700 kV I was blown away that the batteries came down still 14.7 to 15.1 volts and in 4s and um, at three and a half to five and a half minutes I think my longest flight was five and a half and I was just flying around uh, you know, mid moderate speed, not really blasting it. But since this video was taken, I have gone out and tried blasting it, and I still got over three minutes. I think three ten or something, and I was going about as fast as I could. Like I say, I'm not a great pilot, but uh, I was just I was blown away that they didn't they didn't overtax the batteries or anything. Uh, the fifty forty eight racer stars are excellent on it um, I did find out there are two versions of that racer star they're made from two different types and the version I'm using here is a lighter version I'll do a video showing them later but it's a lighter version by half a gram per per prop it's much lighter but it's much more brittle so on these I had one small crash in the grass and I broke a propeller on the the other version I ended up running into a tree and just got right back up and flew anyway that's the end and I appreciate everyone if this video helped you in any way or if you have any questions please don't hesitate to comment 
And if you found it useful, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. And once again, I can't thank you all enough for all of the help. I don't think I would have been able to do this without some of you out there who've, who've reached out to help and, you know, teach and everything. I found that when looking up how to do these, the, um, <laughs> sadly, the most uh, prevalent videos that kept popping up were from Project Falcon, Project Blue Falcon, and um, Culpepper, man, he, I, I miss him and his videos, and I, I didn't know he lived so close to me, but I, I really do miss him, and seeing all the videos pop up, you know, when I was searching for help was, was really, yeah, but anyway, I wanted to thank everyone, and if you like it, you know, let me know, and if you don't like it, let me know, uh, sorry the build video wasn't, you know, detailed, but I couldn't, I don't have anything to actually video it very well. I'll be glad to answer questions, and I want to thank you all, and hope you have a good one. Take care.